Good morning. Welcome to the service today at Trinity Lutheran. First of all, I'm Tom Potterton. I'm a synodically authorized minister. I'm not ordained, but I've gone through uh, classes and I've been approved by the bishop to be able to lead services. Uh, very happy to be here with you today, and uh, we will make it through. Uh, we do have a few announcements this morning. First of all, the February outreach is, is the rural care and sh share food shelf, so remember that. Pastor Katie is on vacation through February 9th. If you have a pastoral emergency this week, please contact Pastor Scott Stye, who's covering for any emergencies. There is a sign up on the table in the narthex for our soup, soup supper on Wednesday, February 21st for the first Sunday in Lent. We are in need of soup to serve. So if you can help out, that'd be great. And on Ash Wednesday, your service will be on Wednesday, the Fe February 14th at 7 p.m. Are there any other announcements? Hearing none, let's please stand and for the forgiveness and <coughs> confession forgiveness of sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As is an the authorized minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We will sing our gathering hymn, which is 507 in the green hymnal, How Firm a Foundation. How firm a foundation, O oh saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say?
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and offer here their worship and praise, let us praise to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain and forgotten us free. pray. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 through 31. Please allow me to give you a little context. God's people have been exiled. They're weary and tired and probably have trouble imagining any kind of a new future. In the first verses of Isaiah 40, Isaiah delivers a message of hope and comfort and redemption for God's people a reminder that he hasn't forgotten them and that he will bring them out of exile. In our verses that we read today, we, we hear about God's power, the power that will be able to make this vision a reality. God, the creator of all, God who knows you, and God that recreates and strengthens. Have you not known, have you not heard, has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely as they are planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. 
To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal? Says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power. Not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Here ends our first reading. Our psalm today is <clears throat> Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11, and it's found on page 287. Hallelujah! How good it is to sing praises to our God. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted. And binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars. And calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly. But the is forever. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. He covers the heavens with clouds. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains. He provides food for flocks and herds. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. Our second reading is from Corinthians, as soon as I get it here, there we go, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 16 through 23. You, I've heard it said, and you probably have too, that if you love what you do, you will never work a day in your life. This seems true for the Apostle Paul as he shares the God, as he remakes remarks to the Corinthian Christians. His main point being that the gospel message that he shares is so awesome and wonderful that he is willing to do almost anything to spread that news. Okay. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a wage. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my wage? Just this, that in my proclamation, I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might gain all the more. To the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to gain Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might gain those under the law. To those outside of the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not outside God's law, but, in, but am within Christ's law, so that I might gain those outside the law, to the weak, I became weak, so that I might gain the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I might become a partner in it. Here ends our readings.
the Holy Gospel is found in the first chapter of Mark, verses 29 through 39. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus heals many at Simon's house. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about him her at once. He came, took her by the hand, and lifted her up. Then the fever left her began to serve them. That evening, at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick and possessed by demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured them, cured many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while still it's very, still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place where he prayed. And his companions hunt, hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came to do. And he went through Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. Here ends the gospel reading. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Holy Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Servant ministry is presented in our gospel lesson today in a way that first sounds like something much less than good news as we meet Simon Peter's mother-in-law. Three verses of the scripture contain everything we need to know about this healing encounter. Listen as I read these three verses a second time. While I do, imagine the scene. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about told him about her at once. He came, took her by the hand, and lifted her up. Then the fever left her. She began to serve them. Mark tells us that men in the family had been together with a couple of friends at the church meeting. They had come in all excited about their evening at the synagogue. They're hungry, and they brought another, a couple of other friends with them. The woman of the house is down with a fever, and now her son-in-law is, is bringing home a hungry group from the church meeting. Perfect. This Jesus enters, then Jesus enters the story. He takes the feverish matri matriarch and lifts her up. In the process, she is healed. She is made whole. Now she gets to bed and waits on them. One minute, she's lying in the bed with a fever. The next minute, she's fetching drinks and chips and trying to figure out if she has enough food in the house to scrape together a meal for those, all those hungry men. Where is the good news for Simon's mother-in-law? The part that stands out as awkward is that she gets up and begins to serve them. The word serve here <coughs> is the Greek word diakonos, which means to wait tables. The life-giving transformation in two verses from Mark is revealed in that one word in the story that has the most problems. After all, it... it it said that she got up and began to talk to them. If she got up and began to eat with them, the story wouldn't be such a problem. But Mark, it's clear that Simon <coughs> Peter's mother-in-law began to serve them. <coughs> Excuse me. Mark used the Greek word for service 
diakonos, which means to wait tables. But the word diakonos meant much more to the Christian community for which Mark wrote the gospel. To talk about service using this word in the early church was to use charged language. The word diakonos was a word used a lot among the early Christians. Diakonos gives us the name for a sacred order of deacons. To deacon, for others, mo meant more than waiting tables, even if it might include that. Mark's prior description of serving another opens up the meaning. Earlier in the chapter of the gospel, Mark used the same word to describe the way the angels ministered to Jesus after the 40 days in the wilderness. This word for, word for the work of angels, Mark used in quoting Jesus about his ministry. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus described his own life and ministry on earth as service using the word diakonos. He told his disciples that they were to be deacons for God. Their work for God would be menial. The disciples' service to others would be difficult. Yet, the life of service Jesus described as a life of diakonos a life of servant minister was the heart of his ministry also. Now we can return to the three verses of the scripture. Simon's mother-in-law had a life-changing encounter with the Messiah. Jesus came into her house and touched her. In Jesus' life-changing touch, Simon Peter's mother-in-law was healed and made whole. Perhaps this is where you want to find yourself in the story. Are you looking for a life-changing encounter with God? Perhaps it has been a long time since you felt that healing touch. So you have come to the right place. Right now, right here, you can put your trust in Jesus to begin your own life-changing journey as you discover the grace, mercy, and love God has for you. For those of us who have had, had have felt the touch of Jesus in our life, we find ourselves alongside Simon's mother-in-law in this story. Mark described Jesus going to her, touching her, and healing her in the past tense. Jesus took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her. These are all described as actions as over and done. But Mark said that Simon's mother-in-law served them using the different verb tense, the imperfect tense. This imperfect tense means that she began deaconing, has continued to deacon, and as far as we know, is still out there deaconing. The imperfect tense refers to an action that is begun, but not completed. This one shift of the verb tense means that she began to serve them and continued to serve them. Her service was not a one-time, overdone with action, like cooking a meal. Simon's mother-in-law began to serve Jesus and his followers, but meaning of her action was transformed by Jesus' healing touch. She did not serve and minister to them because of some duty. She served out of love. Simon's mother-in-law became as much a follower of Jesus as any disciples. Simon's mother-in-law was not ordained. No one was at that point. Yet Mark describes her using language that makes her the first deacon in Christianity. She was the first person have their ordinary diakonos or service to others transformed into service ministry. The early church called persons the ordained deacons to care for the physical needs. Both men and women were called as deacons. This order of ministry 
takes the care and compassion of the church into the community and brings the needs of the community into the church. For the church to be the body of Christ God means it to be, we just don't need many deacons or pastors and very few bishops. 99 out of 100 Christians are not called into ordained ministry because God needs more teachers, students, nurses, engineers, scientists, farmers, plumbers, police, pharmacists, librarians, moms, dads, grandparents, set on fire by the Holy Spirit. The work of the deacons and pastors is not instead of the priesthood of all believers, but support of the ministry of all the baptized. The ministry, excuse me, the ministry of deacons, pastors, and bishops does not let the rest of the body of Christ sit back as passive consumers of faith. Each of us has our own unique way to live into this call according to the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given us. We are to follow the example of this early disciple, Simon's mother-in-law. After we have this and have experienced the forgiveness and healing he offers, we are to respond to the love God has shown us by showing that love to those around us. And as you share God's love, you are living into your own vocation as a minister of the gospel, as a teacher, attorney, real estate agent, salesperson, and you could many, many others, all to be the friend to the glory of God. Your ordinary work will be ministry, not by virtue of ordination, but by the virtue of baptism. And as we share the love and grace we have known in Jesus, we offer that listening ear, kind word, a helping hand. And in that process, we experience the love of God flowing through us. Far from a chore, that loving service is how love grows within us. Amen. We'll now sing our uh, hymn of the day, Precious Lord, Take My Hand, in the blue hymnal 731. <laughs> church together. So let us confess our faith by the words of the Apostles' Creed 
that you will find on page 65 in the Green Hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. Loving God, we give thanks for the gifts that you give us. Remind us always that there is always room at the table for all of your children. May you empower us to seek out the lost, the least, the oppressed, the left out, left behind, so that they may remind that we may remind of love and compassion. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, you know all our hurts and sorrows. Give healing to all who need it in body, mind, and soul, and inspire us to bring your love and compassion to all who suffer. Be with those who grieve the loss of loved ones. May you walk with them in their mourning. We ask you to be with those whose names are on our hearts and minds and those only known to you. Lord, in your mercy, calling, you call us to many things, to use our gifts, our time, our treasures to serve you. May you continue to equip us with those gifts, to share of the power of resurrection and freedom in what your son, Jesus Christ, has done for us. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, we pray for places around the world that face conflict or unrest. Be with those that face violence and fear each day. May you be with those in positions of power to govern and lead with peace. Comfort your people and remind them that you are with them always. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, in the waters of baptism, we are reminded that you are, that we are yours and called children of God. May we give each day for the gift, may we give thanks each day for the gift of life and for the promises made abundant in that gift. Help us to live your grace and mercy each day and every day. Lord, in your mercy. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for Pastor Katie. May she have safe travel and may she be able to batteries to can come back and serve this congregation. Be with her and watch over her. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the, of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share the sign of peace with each other and your neighbor. Peace. 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 You know, if you're in the left seat, that's the captain's seat. Yeah. My girlfriend flies and she's like, I'm in the left seat. Okay, Captain Tam. Yeah, and you don't get this next to you. <laughs> oh, it's a long, long trip. I don't think we're going to need all the people. No, I don't either. I changed my selection for offering because it was way too hard. Yeah.
bottle of coffee replace it. Let us pray our offertory here as found on page 67. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we hear the word of the Lord. In the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And gave thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After, cup, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come now, the table is set. Lord Jesus invites you to receive the gifts of God for the people of God the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. If you continue, give you communion in your church you, that you attend, you are welcome to commune with us this morning. Gluten-free wafers are available upon request. Please follow the instructions of the ushers. You may... Bless. 
sing our true faith confess the people of God from his dwelling take place the supper is ended so now be extended the fruits of this service in all who believe the seed of this teaching receptive souls reaching shall blossom in action of our everyday life we will face our summer sharing in love ever caring embracing his children of each tribe and race with your feast you feed us with your light now lead us unite us as one in this life that we share
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in grace until, li until life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life, of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send your power that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus, Lord. Amen. Now hear the benediction. And now receiving the blessing, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine, may the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll now send, sing our sending hymn in the blue hymnal, 673.